Hello, everybody, and welcome back to PandaCast. I am Rainbow Red Panda, and I am joined once again by my special guest, Spin Dash. Hello. Now, we were here two weeks ago to talk about the latest AEW pay-per-view and our predictions, and now we will be doing the same thing for the upcoming WWE Survivor Series pay-per-view. Can WWE survive a pay-per-view? This is the only question that I really would be excited to talk about. So Survivor Series, this is the 34th, 32nd, 33rd. This will be... I think it's the 34th. The 34th. 34th. It's the 34th okay. event under the... Yeah, it's 34th Survivor Series. 34 years. So it is the 34th Survivor Series, but they are marketing it because it is the 30th anniversary of The Undertaker. So who, who did debut at Survivor Series? Yes, he debuted at Survivor Series 30 years ago, and the rest is history. I am not sure where they're gonna put the under the whatever it is they're doing, the tribute, the farewell, the homage, whatever it is. I don't know if that's going to be something that's at the beginning, if it's at the end, if they're putting it in the middle. I don't know. Or or it's just gonna be after every match, here's another vignette of The Undertaker. Yeah, I think it will probably just be very Undertaker-driven, but I almost wish that because of that, every match was like an Undertaker match. Like, you have a casket match, you have a Buried Alive match, you have... An Inferno match. Yeah, like, I wish that all of these matches were a little more, like, Undertaker-esque than just... Give me Drew, give me Drew McIntyre against, against Roman Reigns in an Inferno match. Mm -hmm. that would be epic that would be epic i was thinking about it because we were talking before before the show about people are going to show up you know mm -hmm. kane and maybe paul bearson i just remember since bruce pritchard is the head writer for both that means we could get brother love yes. i love you yes the undertaker's first manager it would make sense and i keep wondering are they gonna do something i would almost like to see something like similar to what Chris Jericho did with his um, entrance at the first AEW pay-per-view where he like sort of went through all the different like versions of Jericho. Yeah. I would kind of like to see the undertaker do something like that, where he like has all the versions of the undertaker present and accounted for, and maybe they would actually use the roll in by Limp Bizkit instead of Metallica. Yeah. For that occasion. Cause I mean, WWE is, is marketing this everywhere. You got, you got, the, the superstars dressing up as incarnations of the undertaker and doing mm -hmm. photo shoots cart the card games that they have on on mobile everything is 30th anniversary undertaker with cards and skins they like have like this that. like boxed set of random things on the website that they're pushing like you can get like an undertaker watch to commemorate <laughs> but i also wonder i'm like are we gonna get the undertaker or are we gonna get mark Call calloway because i feel like they've been pushing mark calloway a lot more than the undertaker i'm wondering if he's gonna get in the ring take off his jacket and fold it take off his hat lay him in the middle of the ring spotlight and then like three months later he's wrestling again maybe <laughs> he'll so he'll do yeah he'll do like the same thing that he did at wrestlemania a few years ago take everything off leave it in the ring but then that'll be when the main event happens and then roman reigns comes out and he puts it on because he's already you know it's already his yard so he might yeah. as well have the whole undertaker gimmick I mean, I mean, I mean, give him credit. It, it, that seemed like his retirement. At least it was like mm -hmm. he came out of retirement like once. He's not like a Terry Funk that has come out of retirement every year for like 40 years. Yeah. Um, I just but, hope that he doesn't get brought back continuously to go to Saudi, Amer Saudi Arabia and do just matches that. Well, that's because the king, the, the, I think, I, and I, I think crown I forget, prince. the crown prince of Saudi Arabia still thinks like, if I remember correctly, the, when they had the, 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 the greatest Royal Rumble there mm -hmm. and they had like a sumo wrestler in there and people that we've never heard of. Were they thinking it was Yokozuna? Yeah, the, the crown prince, <laughs> won, like when he, when he talked to Vince about, apparently when he talked, when they were talking about this event, he asked for certain wrestlers. So he asked for like Yokozuna and it was like, he's been dead for, for a couple decades now, you know, you, you can't have Yokozuna. So that's why they brought in this sumo wrestler. And then you had like Baba Tunde, you know, mm -hmm. or, or whatever he's 
Dabakato, whatever he's called now, yeah. Dabakato to Retribution. Um, <laughs> but it, I love that it's 30 years of The Undertaker. And mm -hmm. it, it, yes, it dates me a bit. It's like, oh shit, I was seven years old when The Undertaker debuted at Survivor Series, you know? But at the same time, it overshadows everything else. It almost makes me want, like, I remember early on in The Undertaker's career, like, at the end of every match, he would put people in body bags. I almost feel like he needs to put himself in a body bag for his ending and have someone, like, wheel him out. I, I, what I would love to see, uh, you know, is casket somewhere. Mm-hmm. What you know, the biggest streak in in the in the in in the world, right? Mm -hmm. uh, for WrestleMania, have all those caskets, and they've done this before. Have all the caskets with the people's name on it. The only ones that aren't the only ones that aren't closed would be like the Brock Lesnar one and Roman Reigns and Roman Reigns. You know, those would be the only. Why do I feel the Undertaker is going to screw Roman Reigns out of the out of the chan out of the, the main event now? It I don't know. My, it just it, popped in my head. Why do I think Roman the Undertaker is going to choke slam Roman Reigns and let Drew McIntyre get the win? It now just, it's playing in my head. It just really makes me wonder. Like, are they gonna? Is he gonna just come out and sort of have like a, a Hall of Fame kind of moment, or is it gonna be like Brock Lesnar comes out and interrupts him and is like, "You're retiring, but like I beat you first or, or is it gonna be like? he ends up sort of having to defend himself against some sort of attacker, whether there be Alliance wanting retribution on his botched promo from two years ago or Roman Reigns that's upset about something, or maybe the Miz is going to cash in his money in the bank ladder on, on the undertaker somehow to become, to take the streak. He, the Miz yeah. is now the holder of the streak. Or, Honestly, I would. There is one I would really love, and that would be the Undertaker as special guest on the Firefly Funhouse. That could be cool. That would be so much fun. Although the Team SmackDown still has one spot available, so maybe the Undertaker is going to be the fifth man in the five on five men's Survivor Series match. That would make sense. That would make sense. You know, he he started at Royal Rumble. Let him end. Or not, I mean, not started Survivor Series, let him end a Survivor Series. He could be the one on the men's team, and then they could bring Michelle McCool in <laughs> as the girl on SmackDown. True. True. Very true. I don't know that any of that will happen, but... Because The Undertaker's debut, was he brought in in, like, a sort of... Did they have the elimination-style matches in the first they Survivor did. Series? They did. So he came in... Uh, as part of as part of Team DiBiase, okay. Ted DiBiase, he said, "I have right. a partner," but and it was like managed by his manager, you know, accompanied by his manager, Brother Love mm -hmm. from Death Valley, The Undertaker, and then he came out, and it was them, and I, I want to say it was like uh, Bret Hart was on one side. Um, let me actually see. So if he sh he came out when was thirty years ago would be ninety. That ninety, I think that was ninety. Let me see. Um, yeah, so the million dollar team. It was Honky Tonk Man, Greg Valentine, Ted DiBiase, and The Undertaker against Bret Hart, Dusty Rhodes, Coco Beware, and Jim Neidhart. Oh man, so Bret's the only one that's left from that team. Uh, yeah, Bret is the only. Well, wait, Co isn't Coco still alive? I don't know. I what? Yeah, he Coco's might be. Still alive. Yeah, Coco's still alive. I was thinking of somebody else that had passed recently. Yeah. So, and the Undertaker actually was never eliminated in that match. He was counted out. Mm. Maybe he'll come so. back this year for his revenge. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe because he 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 eliminated Coco and he eliminated Dusty Rhodes in that okay. match. Um. So. Uh. Yeah. So. He could be. He, he, he very well could be. That would be interesting to have Seth Rollins, the Messiah, and the Undertaker, who you sort of think of being the opposite of that in the same, the same team. I don't know. I could see them putting him in the SmackDown thing, but I'm not going to. We'll see what happens tomorrow. I think the fact that they're leaving these spots open is a little cutting it close. Mm. But 
maybe injuries and other things have kept them from doing that. But the first match that we will get into after The Undertaker's farewell address to the WWE universe, we have Bobby Lashley versus Sami Zayn. So it is the United States champion versus the Intercontinental champion. And we kind of talked about this earlier. I definitely am more on Team Sammy. Bobby Lashley is just not... He's okay, but I feel like if it was just him on his own, I wouldn't care at all. I do... I mean, MVP gives him a little bit more interest in a way just because he's good at talking. Yeah. What you got here is you've got three guys. and so you got three guys. Bobby Lashley, Shelton Benjamin, Cedric Alexander. Mm-hmm. All three are amazing athletes, and I yes. take nothing from them. All three are amazing athletes. But, and even when Shelton was a single guy years ago, and he had a very good run with the WWE, you know, multiple time Intercontinental Champion, multiple time Tag Team Champion. The problem is with these three, they're not talkers. Their, right. their talking skills are not good, even though we know Lashley can talk from his time in Impact. We know yeah. Lashley can talk, but some, but just because of the way the WWE works, it's not working for him. Throw him with a guy like MVP, which, say what you will, oozes charisma. Yeah. MVP is just charismatic all the way through. So you have him as the mouthpiece, which, if you really look at it, he's it's the same as a lot of those old factions like Money, Inc. When you had you know, IRS, the one, two, three kid, Tatanka, Bam Bam Bigelow, and, and Ted DiBiase. Mm-hmm. When did you ever hear Tatanka or Bam Bam or or the Kid or even IRS ever really talk other than their, their one sentence promos? Right. Ted was the mouthpiece. He was the charismatic leader. That's what you got with MVP. Then you've got on the other side, you got Sami Zayn. Sami can talk. He can wrestle. Um, he's got this. He he's got this arrogance about him ever since he won became the sole Intercontinental Champion. Right. Um. And the, I think the main reason this match stinks on paper or it does not stinks, but has no, no interest is because the WWE does not put any sort of emphasis on either of those two championship belts. Right. They're, they, they, they don't, they, you, you never get invested in a United States championship feud or an intercontinental championship feud. And especially now that the, that the, I'm sorry, I don't like the the intercontinental belt. Yeah, I don't like the new belt at all. I, like I don't know the why they did it. It looks it doesn't look anything like an intercontinental championship should look. You know, when they brought back the original intercontinental design, it looked good. Mm-hmm. Even the the oval one from the 90s from the attitude area, you knew what it was. Now, it just looks like a, to me it looks like a compass. Yeah, it does. So, it's a match that I don't think anybody's really Now, Saying this, it could end up being a very good match between the two. Because yes. you got the power of Lashley against the speed of Sammy. So it could be a really good match. Will the Hurt Business get involved? Nine times to ten, we're going to see the Hurt Business get involved. But I would love to see Sammy come out on top because I think they can do more with Sammy because he's a singles guy and has nobody to play off of right now than Lashley, who's got the entire Hurt Business. Do you think that this could be a thing where they reunite Sammy with Shinsuke and Cesaro to sort of even up the odds? I would love that. I was thinking the other day, I, those are two guys that are missed opportunities in the company. Mm-hmm. They are two guys that quite honestly have more charisma than most people in that company. Shinsuke should, be, should have been a champion a world champion already. Cesaro should have been a world champion a long time ago. Yeah. So they're two guys that are very missed opportunities. They're, I don't think they're ever going to get out of the mid card unless some fate happens. Um, well, I, I would love to see him come in and, and, and do that. Shoot. I would love to see, cause we've been seeing them a little more together lately. Kevin Owens and Sammy. Cause we've been seeing a little more of Kevin yeah. Owens and Sammy together, like on talking smack and all that. So, but I know Kevin Owens is also in that Survivor Series. Yeah, match. that's why I was thinking maybe it would be so, Shinsuke and Cesaro. Yeah. Which, and I don't think that WWE has used Shinsuke correctly. I think NXT did a really good job at utilizing him and making him, you know, 
worth what he should be you know he was very advertised as like this great wrestler in japan and like all of his accomplishments but then he got to wwe and he really hasn't been utilized in a way that i think best benefits him and i would love to see him have a legitimate run yeah he had one opportunity he won the royal rumble went to went against aj at wrestlemania for shinsuke but that was a match everybody thought was going to be the match of the night it was going to blow the roof off and wwe botched it Mm mm-hmm now, something I was just thinking of, a way Sam because the Hurt Business will play a factor in this, and that's why most people would probably go with Lashley. Yeah. But wh- I have a thought that Retribution will make their presence known at Survivor Series in that match against the Hurt Business, since they've had that kind of feud off and on for months. Do you think that Retribution might go after The Undertaker? <laughs> That might be a thing too. I think they're because they took apparently Retribution took over the WWE's Twitter account mm-hmm. this week, so there's they're going to play a factor. And if anything, considering they've already kind of built that feud of her business Retribution, even though it's played to death and it's not it's not something anybody wants. WWE is good about giving us what we don't want. Yeah. So I could see them interfering in this match, which would give Sammy the win. Yeah, and I I definitely think Sammy and all of his matches that he's had since he's been back, he always so, he wins, but it's always like you know he clipped Jeff Hardy's ear to a ladder, he tied yeah. he tied someone up so that they weren't able to get a title, get the title. Like I think that he'll win in a unique way that won't necessarily be cheating, but it'll just be like you shouldn't be able to do that, but yet it's not technically wrong. Yeah. So we'll see what happens, but I I think that Sammy just with his like smart like ring smart skills and just him I his promos on this saying you know I'm the I'm the champion of all of the countries you're just the champion of one country yeah and just all of those things on top of each other I wish that they allowed the superstars like how. Drew McIntyre was on SmackDown this last week. I wish that, like, for the entire month leading up to Survivor Series, you had, like, face-to-face interactions with these people instead of it just being, like, on one show they say one thing and then we have to wait until Friday for a response. Having it be an interbrand thing between, I guess, USA and Fox, the way they're advertising the five-on-five matches. It's not even, like, Raw versus SmackDown. It's, like, USA versus Fox. Now, one of the interesting things is, and a lot of people were wondering this, is why NXT is not involved. I Yeah, I was going to talk about that as well. I think that would be the one thing that would make me interested in Survivor Series is if they did kind of what they did last year by having NXT mm. versus Raw versus SmackDown, especially for like for the women's match. I would love to see Io Shirai added in to yeah. Asuka and Sasha. Some of the other matches, I think the five on five would be good. And I think last year it really worked because that really put Keith Lee on, that gave him his push, I think. Seeing yeah. how he interacted with Roman and all of that stuff that happened from Survivor Series, I think really helped some of the pushes. And right I now, always be... think, I was thinking that maybe they didn't do that because at the time Finn Balor was injured That's and what they weren't sure say. what the timetable was. And so it would be weird to have everyone except for the main guy. Yeah, and I was looking at that because, like, to have, like, one, I would love have, because we've always talked about Asuka and Io, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think those two in a match together would be amazing, especially with Sasha in that Mm -hmm. mix. I think that would be a great time. That would be the match of the night if they, for me at least, if they did that. Uh, Right now, it would be Leon Ruff added into the United States and and the Intercontinental. And if that was the case, I could see Leon Ruff winning in some way. I could see, like, something happening and Leon Ruff pulling it out. Maybe Um, they would have his his girlfriend that's the referee be there, and it would start, like, a feud in that way. And then Lorcan and Birch against uh, the Street Profits in the New Day. That would be good, too. Which would be good because Orkin and Lorkin and Birch are brawlers. They are strong, stiff brawlers, and you got two teams that are more high flying. So to be able, you know, you'd have oh, we got these two high flying teams, but then you have Ork, Lorkin and Birch trying to like ground them. It, mm-hmm. you know, then you'd have Pat McAfee in there bringing the undisputed era. There, yeah. There's just so many possibilities, but I guess it was you know what yeah because, be you know because Finn Balor was out. Um, 
which he did come back this past week. Yeah. But because he was out there, they may not have known the timetables. Um, you know, the, the tag team champions, maybe they don't, you know, in NXT, you got Lorcan and Birch. Maybe they don't see them as on the same tier as, say, um, uh, the, the New street Day profits. or yeah, the, street the Street Profits, profits. which... Now, if it was a couple months ago, and maybe if it was Imperium or or Brizango, that oh man, be- having having Brizango with the New Day and the Street Profits, that would be like That'd be a that, damn good match. That could be such an entertaining, just even for like the comedic aspects, like already the New Day versus the Street Profits. It's like it's gonna be that might be my favorite match of the night besides maybe the women's match do you Um, feel that the new day is going to come out in gears of war five gear since it has been announced that they're going to be playable characters downloadable characters maybe i would almost like to see Big E come out with them yeah even though they're on different shows i i have liked with them that they still have Big E in their entrance song like he's still the guy you know it's new day yes it is and but they haven't. I mean, I don't think Big E has really had a match or anything. So it, since the they kind of stopped his push. Yeah. So I mean, they show him with the Street Profits, but it's sort of just like, you know, it's almost like okay, we broke up the New Day, so now we're gonna keep like teasing putting E with the Street Profits, and then it's like, well, then what's the point of breaking up the New Day? Like, you can't just make a new one. Yeah. Could be a new New Day. So they need to do something with him. I wish they would just put them back, but. I don't know that that'll happen. I'm I'm wondering if maybe at the Royal Rumble, they'll all be in the ring together and either they'll be like an actual like heel turn from Big E maybe or something. Maybe. I thought it was interesting uh, re- listening to somebody say about it, you know, saying that they, if they, you know, if they were going to give Big E a solo push, he couldn't do it with the New Day. Yet they gave, they yet gave Kofi, Kofi. King, Kofi was world heavyweight champion, which mm-hmm. they never mention again. He he never got a rematch against yeah. Brock Lesnar. He never got a rematch for that title. Mm-mm. So it, it was kind of like they were just like, okay, this was fun. We gave people what they wanted. Now we're gonna go and yeah, do something else. So. All right. So I guess for the first match, we're saying Sammy. Right? Yep. We're Sammy's both in, in agreement for that one. And then we've been talking sort of about the New Day versus the Street Profits. I kind of want the Street Profits to win to shut Xavier Woods up. Now, here's, my, here's the reason why. I have nothing against Xavier Woods, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, I do have a thing, and I mean, it's, it's documented from the Nerd Raid show. Everybody knows it. When somebody kind of starts putting themselves on this pedestal that they are the king of the nerds, and they are the king gamer, and the king geek, and all this other stuff, that's when I kind of have a, you know, f- freaking, you know... Uh, an issue. I have an issue. You know, freaking uh, Chris Hardwick knows very well from Twitter. I have an issue with that. Um... So with 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 Xavier Woods, I kind of have that kind of issue with it, um, because I mean, I watch up up down down. He he's not that good. If it's outside of a fighting game, he's really not that good of a gamer. Take him out of a ter- a fighting game, and he's not really all that good. <laughs> okay, just saying. But I think it's the new day is what six seven time world uh, tag team champions now. I think eight it's like time. eight or nine. I think it's eight. They said nine, and they're like, "Oops, we messed up." Yeah, but I think that I think it should go to the Street Profits because they need the oomph. They, mm-hmm. you know, the new the, a loss to the Street Profits does not hurt the New Day. Yeah, it doesn't hurt them at all. At this point in their career, it doesn't hurt them to lose. The the but the Street Profits still young in their career, and really their run as tag team champions has been lackluster. There's been really nothing that has. I mean, they fought against Garza and Andrade for months and months and months. They haven't. Yeah, really... well, and then they had the the whole thing with the Viking Raiders. Yeah. Which I mean, that was cool, but it was very drawn out. And then their final like match wasn't even a match. It was the, just them ended up finding fighting ninjas. It yeah. Didn't really make any sense. So I think the Street Profits should get the win. I think they'll they'll get the win. They'll they'll shut the new day up. They'll they'll prove it. Um. I just don't know how the finish will roll. If Biggie will be a part of it or not, I don't know. But yeah. I, I'm I I would give it to the Street Profits on this one. I can agree with that. I think it will be a good match. I think that it'll be interesting to see. I almost wish that these matches would be like 
the winner gets like they they were they were combining titles because it's just like there's not a yeah like there's not a title match like none of this is any sort of title match it's all just like you know brand versus brand which i mean as you've said before like they used to have a whole pay-per-view for this like and you got a trophy at that pay-per-view whichever team won got a trophy yeah so because jericho carried that trophy around for a while miz carried that trophy around for a while there's nothing here now a unification that you know and then having the because they're all filmed i mean smackdown and raw are filmed in the same place right now it's 2020 they're filmed in the exact same place Mm -hmm. so you could have the intercontinental champion on both brands wrestling. It just, I mean, it's been done. You've done it. You did it when raw and SmackDown first, when, you know, when SmackDown came around, you did it. You had the champions on both shows. It's, it can be doable. Don't know why we have to have two brands. And I almost think for this, now that I'm thinking about it, they almost, I think that they should have had the raw and SmackDown women's champions tag team together against the women's tag team champions because yes Baszler and Nia Jax are in the five on five match but I mean it's sort of like every champion is like represented here battling another champion but then you have those two that they're not really included so they could have easily had a tag match like champions versus champions to see whatever they were wanting to whatever you see from these matches i really wish that for survivor series they sort of went back to how they always used to do it for a while where the champion so you would have like team roman and team drew or orton or whoever is the t- the champion at the time and then you just have regular matches for the rest of the card because it just makes right. it more, and then the champions can have their own matches. Because sometimes the champions, they were just the captain; they weren't even in the ring defending anything. They were just, you know, the captain. I thought that those were the better Survivor Series matches than just having it being like Team Raw versus Team SmackDown. All right. Okay, so New Day for the tag titles. So now we will get into the five on five matches. We will start with the men's. So we have for team raw, we have AJ styles who is currently professing to be the team captain. Although no one else is agreeing with that. You have Keith Lee, Seamus, Braun Strowman, and Matt Riddle, who is now just known as Riddle, which I think is ridiculous. I mean, I feel like just because his name is Riddle, like if his last name was like, anything else maybe it wouldn't sound as weird but i just feel like he's gonna turn into like the riddler (laughs) or something like i just it just doesn't make sense i don't like the name change not a fan and then you have on team smackdown you have kevin owens jay uso king corbin seth rollins and then someone to be determined whether that's somebody that wins a match tomorrow night or they do surprise the undertaker or someone else the last minute all right so if they put the undertaker on team smackdown i could see team smackdown pulling out the win but the thing of it is with seth rollins on that team and we know he cannot get along with kevin owens i'm almost tempted to say a Mysterio is going to take that final spot. It's just, I somehow I could see them putting Dominic in there. And then it would be this like Dominic and, and Rollins have to work together to win and it doesn't work. Um, but I think they built more up on Team Raw than they have on Team SmackDown. They have definitely put more emphasis on Team Raw than SmackDown. Yeah. Um... I just feel like it. all they've really done for building up, at least, I don't know, I haven't really seen any build up for Team SmackDown, but for both teams on Team Raw, they're basically just showcasing that these teams don't, this team doesn't like each other. These teams can't get along. They're not going to tag well. It's going to be a mess. It's going to be very disorganized. And like, it's sort of like having a team full of Tennille Dashwoods. It's all about each member. <laughs> I love Neil Dashwood. <laughs> they don't, I love her so much. <laughs> they don't care. You can have AJ's um, bodyguard. He can be their Caleb. 
and with a K. Yeah. And, with a K. And that's it. Maybe maybe AJ's bodyguard is going to end up being the fifth member on Team SmackDown. I don't know. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because looking at it, like now Riddle and King Corbin have had matches and feuds before. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone else, it's kind of like clean slates as far as any per any like in story beef, you know. So this is why these these are so hard because there there's no real reason why either of these two teams should win. There there doesn't serve anything for either like and this goes with the other with the women's match too neither team the, nothing about them makes you want to say this one's going to win over the other but yeah. but i mean i feel like for the men's it will come down to jay uso and somebody i don't really know who which one on team raw i think will be the final man but I feel like just with the way they've been pushing Jey Uso and the storyline with Roman and, and all of that, I think that he will, I don't know if he'll be the winner, but I think right. that he'll be the, the last man standing for team SmackDown. I think Strowman is going to get counted out. Um, I don't think they're going to have somebody pin Strowman, but kind of like an Andre, the giant thing, he's going to get counted out. Yeah. Um, Honestly, I could see what I would like to see at the end. I think it should be Keith Lee and AJ as the final two on Team Raw. It should be Keith and AJ. Um, you know, I, I'm going to give it to Team Raw just because of the the names that they got in there, the way they've been building them up, and all their code names. That yeah, Riddle the gave code them names. The code names. The code name. I I hope that they come out. I hope that Riddle gives them shirts. And they all come out with their code names on the shirt. Yeah. And I like I jerseys. think that AJ will either be the first one eliminated or he'll be one of the last ones. It just depends. I think that he won't be like a middle middle elimination. I think he'll either be first or last just because he's this captain that's trying to like hold them together, which could lead to him getting distracted and getting a roll up or some sort of like fast pin. And then they're all like, see, you're not our captain because you suck. I just, to me, it also depends on who this fifth person is for SmackDown. And thinking of the roster, I can't really think of who I think would fill that role. It could be a Mysterio, but then they've also been very vocal on, you know, the Seth Mysterio feud is over. I don't know if, if they were to do something where they put Murphy in that, that, could create more problems because they dislike each other right now. I almost would have rather seen Murphy be in this match than Seth. I feel like this is going to be, I, I keep hoping that this is when Seth gets written off the show until after Becky has her baby, because I feel like she's so close that if they don't do it now, it's going to be just like a short, time for him and then he's going to be gone well it's already been shown that he's going it's been reported that he is going to be taking some time off after survivor yeah. series uh, to be with becky who looks amazing and yeah. looks amazing i saw the photo shoot she's glowing she looks yeah she amazing. looks really good looks beautiful um because she's so, due on christmas so how great is that at least whenever she was first talking about it she hasn't given a lot of statements since she initially left but initially she was due on christmas so it's like, okay, are you going to fill time for him for a month or just have him get injured or something yeah. and written off the show until I'm guessing maybe the Royal Rumble or Becky something. Lynch back at WrestleMania confirmed. Uh, <laughs> but I'm yeah, giving it'll, it to it'll be interesting. Maybe. I, I oh, could the, see Team Raw. Actually, no, no. We're talking about the women's match now. Um, truth be told, I'm going with Team SmackDown for the women's match. For the women's match... For SmackDown, okay, so for the women's match, we have for Team Raw, Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler, Lana, Lacey Evans, and Peyton Royce. Peyton Royce and Lacey Evans this week replaced Mandy uh, Rose Brooke and, and Mandy Dana Rose. Brooke. And then from Team SmackDown, you have Bianca Belair, Ruby Riot, Liv Morgan, and then two members that have not been announced yet. I almost think that one of those members was supposed to be Zelina Vega. But as we kind of talked about on Monday, she um, was surprisingly released from the company 
for what appears to be one being pro unionization and then also having an OnlyFans account. So I'm guessing she's, you know, she's done. They they did all their Undertaker promo shoots and like got like just were pushing her so hard, but then all of a sudden she's just gone. I think yeah. that she would have been. I really feel like she would have been a member of this team, though. I think she would have been. Uh, I've watched some of her streams since then. Um, very humbling. She's mm-hmm. not angry that she was let go. She's heartbroken that she was let go because she yeah. stood up for what she believed in, and they fired her for it. Yeah. Um, and that does also put Alistair Black kind of. What is he gonna do? Yeah, I've heard reports that he is wanting to move back down to NXT. They, they, and they told him no. Yeah, they told I him no. I, Which, I liked him better on NXT. He had I feel more like, power, yeah. Yeah, I feel like the way he was used earlier, like before there were no crowds and everything, where he was sort of on his winning streak and having having good matches. But then I think that was when they changed um, who was producing Raw and who was yeah. in charge. And it's when, the same once way- that happened, he was sort of buried it's the same way they bring Robert, you know, they bring Bobby Roode up to the main roster mm-hmm. and it's not Bobby Roode. That was in it. They, they've done it with pretty much everybody, you know, EC three, he mm-hmm. was cutting some of the best promos of his life in NXT until he went back to impact. Cause the control your narrative promos are just oh, yeah, so good. out of this world, but he goes to the main roster. He gets nothing. Robert Roode. He's an NXT. He's the champion. He's, he's, he's Bobby Roode. He's what we have always known of Bobby Roode. They put him with Dolph Ziggler, and it's like he's just another guy. He's just another body. They do it with everybody that comes up from NXT because Hunter knows how to book the guys. He Hunter has them booked to their strengths and who they are. They go up to Vince with the other writers, and it's like because I think because the writers for NXT is basically DX. Yeah, it's it's Hunter. It's 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 Hunter. It's HBK. It's Road Dog. The the writers for NXT is DX that brought us the, the best stuff in the world for, for years. You go up to the main roster and it's Bruce Pritchard. That's, yeah. all, that's all it is, is Bruce Pritchard. Mm-hmm, Cause yeah, like Heyman's not in, in that control yeah. anymore. So NXT, everybody wants to go back to the, Finn Balor. Since he went back to NXT, started calling himself the Prince better than stuff he was ever so on the main good. roster, you know? So wh- <sighs> it's the, it's the way it is. I think Zelina Vega would have been a part of it. The thing is team raw Going back to Tennille Dashwood, it's all mm-hmm. about Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I like Shayna Baszler. Let me put it that mm-hmm. way. I like Shayna Baszler. Yes. I do not like Nia Jax. I have never been into Nia Jax. I've never found the appeal of Nia Jax. And also knowing, now this is controversial, and I'll say it, this is controversial, her reputation of injuring her opponents. Yeah. And I'm going to st- put on that because people could say, oh, well, the opponents need to protect themselves. But go back and look at Kyrie Sane, who yeah. was one of my favorite people in that company was Kyrie Sane. It's when she got with Asuka, she started doing the face paint. She came out with the, with the uh, umbrella. Mm-hmm. Amazing stuff. There was no way she could have protected herself from those injuries that she sustained in the ring with Nia Jax. Because Nia- Jax just threw her like a rag doll. So I've not, I'm not behind Nia Jax. I don't see her appeal. I don't think she's good on the mic. She's, she's after all these years, I still feel she's green. She, she's not progressing. Right. Now, Shayna Baszler, progressing like nobody's business. That mm-hmm. woman is, to me, she's kind of like a second coming of Kurt Angle where she just picks it up. The promo that she gave the night that Becky announced that she was leaving and gave the title to Asuka, the promo that she gave about Becky having a baby and all of this stuff, and even the dig at Seth, I was like, that is, like, one of my favorite promos of the year. It was just so, like, it was just so good. Like, it was insulting, but it was just so good. And Um, I'm glad that they did give her a push with the tag titles, but I really would like to see her be a serious contender for one of the women's champions in the future. Right. Um, I think, I think that team raw just because of the way they've been doing it. I almost think that Lana is going to be, I think that raw might win and it's going to be Lana that wins it. That is they keep giving her, you know, she, she's this underdog all the time. You know, she was the underdog in her qualifying match. She just keeps kind of like squeaking out these victories. And I really think that just with all the 
shit that they've been giving her, I really expect her to be the the sole survivor, at least of Team Raw, if not just the one that, that wins the entire thing. Now, here's my thought process on the final, because there's two slots left, I believe, on Steam mm-hmm. SmackDown. Here's the two slots that I'm thinking. Natalia is going to be one of them. Yeah. I'm going to say Natalia because every week it's kind of like Natalia wants to be on the team and she doesn't get it. Natalia is going to be on it. The next one, go with me on this one, is going to be Billy Kay. Yeah, I could see that. Because then you're going to get Billy and Peyton. Because mm-hmm. it to me it made no sense because from what I read, they uh, Vince and backstage were very high on Peyton Royce. They wanted to push Peyton Royce, but then they just put her in a ta- they took her from one tag team, put her in another tag team with Lacey Evans. Mm-hmm. You know, and Lacey Evans, granted, she's very athletic, but stop flipping her from from face to heel, face yeah. to heel, face to heel. She's best when she's a heel. Yeah, Lacey Evans, I don't know. She's never grown on me the way that I feel like she's grown on other people. There was, like, a small amount of time where I was like, okay, like, I could see myself liking her. But for the most part, I I am usually not as interested in her character. But I, I did think it was interesting they put her with Peyton Royce. And then I don't know if it if it's supposed to be this way or if they really just don't have the chemistry, but I mean, all the like botches that you've seen, like with their entrances and how they get in each other's way all the time and everything like that. It's like, they definitely don't, they need some work, but they, I mean, they kind of did the same thing with um, Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke. You know, they took Mandy, they split um, Sonia and Mandy, and then they just put Mandy with another, another person. Right. So I, I I'm still, I'm thinking it's going to be, I would love to see team here's well, here's the other reason why teams I'm going to say team SmackDown and is that first name on the list, Bianca Belair. Yeah. I that think could they, be too. they need to push Bianca Belair. She is the future, mm-hmm. you know, and now I don't think Charlotte's cleared to come back yet. So I don't think Charlotte's going to be a a, a player in this because I don't think she's. What to back. she was drafted? What team was she drafted? What program um, was she drafted to? I do not remember. I feel like it was Raw. Well, where's Andrade? <laughs> Andrade didn't Andrade go to SmackDown? I thought I don't actually know. Uh, so Charlotte is on the Raw brand. Do you know, man? Charlotte is thirty four years old. Mm-hmm. Wow, I didn't know that. Um. So, oh, okay. Do you think uh, that Bailey could qualify? No, because I have a theory about Bailey coming up. Okay. I have a theory about that. So, according to Wikipedia, Flair announced that she would be taking time off to undergo another surgery on her breast implants. That's why she's not around right yeah, now. Yeah, I heard about that. So, um, but I think it's going to be Billy Kay. It's going to be uh, Natalia. I think Bianca Belair is going to be the sole survivor. I could see Belair being the winner. I feel like it might come down to Lana and Mel- and Belair. Yeah. I just really think that Lana is going to be the sole survivor. But I feel like then she's going to be the sole sur- or she's going to be the last survivor on Team Raw, and then they're going to like make it sound like she blew the whole thing because she lost. But like maybe it'll be like three on one. Like Lana will be the last on raw but then there'll be like three people on smackdown or something and so she'll defeat two other people and then fall right to bel-air what i would love to see is in this match the iconics re- reform and just walk out on their teams yeah because they're the iconics just walk out on their teams but i'm gonna give it to team smackdown solely because i think bel-air is the one one they need to push and and they she needs to they need to keep her strong so as the sole survivor of her team and have her be the sole survivor and eliminate two to three people i almost think that for these team these five on five matches since they don't include the champions of the brands they need to say like the the sole survivor gets a title shot at an upcoming live event or pay-per-view or something like give them some sort of incentive besides just bragging rights i guess yeah um all right so the only two matches we have left are the two title well not title matches but the main the main champions so for the women we have oscar versus sasha banks 
which I would love to see Io Shirai as part of this, but NXT is not invited to the party this year. Nope. So I'll just have to wait for next year. Asuka is going to win it, and here's my reason why. Sasha is going to get screwed by Bailey and Carmella. Because that's the way they've been building it. Carmella has attacked her every week, super mm-hmm. kicked her every week. Bailey is still in the picture. Bailey is still upset that she lost the championship and all of that. So it's going to come down to the end. We're not going to see Carmella and Bailey till the end. So it's going to be a good match. We're going to get Sasha and Oscar. It's going to be an amazing match. It's, it, I'm feeling it's going to be an NXT style match between these two. One but, the, but the ending is going to be Bailey doing something and Carmella. It's going to cost Banks the win because right now Asuka has no opponent. Asuka has no opponent going forward. But ba- but Sasha has Carmella and Bailey. So by furthering that feud between them by costing Sasha the match, that builds more hype for the SmackDown Women's Championship matches to come. Mm-hmm. And it reinforces Asuka as especially with this run where everybody's like, oh, well, she's, con-, you know, she barely win, keeps the title. She keeps the title, but it's kind of like there's always something that leads her to keeping the title or something. Um, that's the way it's going to happen, in my personal opinion. Oscars are going to win due to interference from Bailey and Carmella. I could see that. I It would almost suck to see an it win by an interference because I feel like most of the matches, like during the whole Bailey and Sasha feud, like so- Bailey was able to beat Oscar, but Sasha never really was. So it sort of just continues Sasha's losing streak against Asuka. Yeah. But I could definitely see that happening. Although I'm wondering maybe if Carmella and Bailey will go to interfere and then they end up just fighting each other. Could be. Because they're both after the same the same prize. I am wondering for the type of review, who do you think the commentary team is gonna be? Are they gonna combine or are they gonna keep switching? I think they're gonna keep switching. Because you know darn well when Sasha ba- well, I'm gonna say at least I think they might switch or it might be a combination. I think it might be Graves, Saxton. It'll, it might be Graves, Saxton, and Cole. They'll put um, Graves and Saxton back together so yeah. that Graves is because, just very unhappy. Is WWE really going to miss an opportunity for Michael Cole to just scream out, It's boss time! <laughs> like, or, or, It's the big dog! I'm sorry, Michael Cole, I liked you when you first started, but now that all you are is it's when I gotta hear it's boss time every mm-hmm. week for like the last three, four, five years. I'm done, man. Quit it. Just stop. When Tony Storm came back, I saw something that was like, What are they gonna say when if Sasha Banks and Tony Storm ever have a match together? Cause for a while it was like that was Tony time. No, they're going to say, stand back. There's a storm coming through. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> but, yeah, I definitely, I want to say Oscar's going to win, but I also feel like they're finally starting to push Sasha Banks in a positive way. So if she did end up winning, I wouldn't be surprised. But I think just based on my my internal feelings, I want I want Asuka to be the winner and then at the next pay-per-view i don't know i feel like her next match i don't know who she's gonna defend are they gonna wait until charlotte is back are they gonna break up the tag champions i want to know when the tag team champ the women's tag champions are going to start defending on the other brands like they were supposed to like when when bailey and sasha went to nxt and said you know we we can defend on all three brands and then they haven't been on any brand yeah. sense and like i really want the riot squad to have a run with those belts i really mm-hmm. want ruby and and live because i don't feel backstage is like they were high on live when they split her up but then it was kind of like the, it was the emelina thing anytime yeah. they take someone who's a little different and try to make her this like glamorous like blonde model type it doesn't work and they had to revert her back to you know she's still blonde and all that but she's kind of reverted back to the you know what she was with the riot squad originally i think the only difference is that she doesn't have the blue tongue yeah which which made her unique you know now she's just kind of the same but i don't think we i don't know if we'd ever really see them with the singles championships yeah but tag team i think the riot squad can 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 pull that off 
And then if you look at NXT, I mean, uh, Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell, mm-hmm. Dakota Kai and, Ra- and Raquel Gonzalez. You, I think you, Rhea Ripley and Shashi Blackheart could have a good a They good could have tag. a good one. I've heard rumors that Rhea might be coming up. I've heard that. Because of them, uh, which I won't spoil it for yeah, you. Yeah, no, I, I saw kind of. Yeah, her match with EO this last week. Um, but So that could be, she could, I mean, shoot, she could be the next member of the Team SmackDown. Maybe she goes to SmackDown, she joins Team SmackDown. Um, but I, I, they need to do something with those belts. They need to put some legitimacy on them, especially mm-hmm. now that like TNA is bringing back the, their tag team belts, which their tournament, I don't know what they're doing with that tournament. It makes no it's, sense to me. It's a mess. And I mean, it, yeah, it's just such a long, a long tournament, and it's just yeah, it's all over the place. I would still like to see AEW have women's tag titles, just because they have so many women, and they're not yeah. really they don't have a lot to do with them. So I would like to see that. I know a lot of people don't want more titles in that company, but I'm like a women's title, a women's tag title would at least maybe stop the complaints that they're not properly using the women's division. Yeah, but. Yeah, I don't know if they're going to... I would like to see them break up Na- Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler and then have Baszler versus Asuka at least until Charlotte comes back and has her like billionth title run. Yeah, I think the plan for her is that they're going to have her beat her dad's record only with the women's title instead of the men's. Yeah, I can see that. All right, and so... The main event of the evening, besides I'm guessing The Undertaker doing whatever The Undertaker does, we have Drew McIntyre versus Roman Reigns with Paul Heyman and potentially Jey Uso. I don't know how, what will happen with that. This one's hard. This one is hard to call. To me, truthfully, if there is a match that's hard to call, it's this one because they just gave drew momentum by giving him the title back Mm -hmm. so he's got momentum going in but you also have the momentum of roman reigns right now Mm -hmm. and it's very uh, reigns as a heel works him as this heel persona works and it is we've been waiting five plus years for a Mm -hmm. roman reigns gimmick to work and it's finally working he finally turns heel and there's no one actually there to boo him exactly um but then you get you know like i said then they give drew this ma- the, the title um however i personally feel that roman is going to win in some way shape or form i don't know how the finish is going to go i don't know if it's going to be clean or what but roman is going to win because that right now is where the money is I could see that. I I think that if Roman wins, it might be due to interference, whether it be from Randy Orton. I'm hoping that now the Drew and Randy Orton saga is over because I'm kind of over it. Like Randy Orton, he's, he's good and everything. Like I appreciate everything that he's done, but I'm just kind of tired of him. I need him to just not be around all the time. I don't need him to be, he's kind of like, I feel like him, I feel like the same way I feel about Triple H. Like you can come in and wrestle, but I don't need you to have a title. I don't need you to be the top guy. I was not really interested in this being Orton versus Reigns just because I just don't care about Orton in that way. Yeah. I just don't. Somehow I think Daniel Bryan may make an appearance and have something to do with the, with this match because they had kind of, they are kind of setting that up. Um, that Roman's next feud might be with Daniel Bryan. Mm-hmm. Um, I honestly would love to see the Fiend somewhere in this match or Alexa Bliss. Yeah, I feel like they've been definitely setting up that the Fiend will probably be one of the next people that goes after it on Raw. Yeah. And then you also have Randy Orton has had his problems with the Fiend. I almost yeah. feel like with the ending. I feel like no matter who wins, maybe they both just beat the crap out of each other. And at the end, I feel like it would be something where the Miz comes out and cashes it in on both of them and takes both belts. He has Mizzy two belts. Mm -hmm. I think this is going to be a case. We are going to see the Miz cash, try to cash in at, 
uh, at Survivor Series. I do think that's going to happen. Um, personally, I think The Miz needs the title again. Yeah. I, I honestly, I know people do. I love The Miz as world champion. I, I I've, loved loved, I've loved The Miz throughout his entire career. Um, I, I think the reason why is because I, I've, he was one of the first wrestlers that I can say I have followed throughout their entire career. But I, the first time that he got the champion, I, I was so excited. I was so happy. I would love to see him get the title again. I love the stuff that him and John Morrison do. And I feel like they've sort of been hinting at not really trouble between the two of them, but there have been a thing where like Miz hasn't saved Morrison. Yeah. Morrison wasn't able to save Miz on SmackDown. So they could be kind of setting them up for a split in the future. They could be. Yeah. I just think the Miz consistently has been, I mean, he's been there for close to two decades now. If you really think about it, the Miz mm-hmm. has been there for, for over 10 years. Yeah. Um, he is a, one of the longest reigning guys there. He is very well liked in the company. Anytime media needs to be done or personal appearances, the Miz does it. I mean, they wouldn't have given him his own TV show, Miz and Mrs. If they weren't mm-hmm. high on the Miz, the guy can talk. The mm-hmm. guy is one of the best talkers they have. And the thing is, Miz is best when he's a heel. Mm-hmm. The Miz is best with a heel. Now, if he's a face with a little bit of heelish tendencies, like he's kind of a tweener, he's also good. Now, mm-hmm. when he's like making gear ideas with Shane McMahon, then it's not really, it, it's not fun. But the Miz consistently being, and especially back with John Morrison, mm-hmm. he's at his, he's at the best he's been in years. Throw in, if, if he gets the title, have Morrison there, bring Maurice back. Because, you know, they can afford a sitter. They can afford a nanny to take care of the two kids. Yeah. Get, Ma- get Maurice back in there because they were always good together. Miz and, and Maurice are perfect, you know, on screen, not just the marriage, but on screen, they are perfect dynamic together. Yeah. Give him a give him a legit run with the title. Give him a legit run, and he could cash it in on, on McIntyre. And, and I think that would actually be pretty fun. He beats McIntyre at Survivor Series. You know, and there you go. Do you think they're setting up Drew and Sheamus to reunite as a tag team? I would love it. See, I was upset when they broke up the bar. Me too. I, think, I thought the bar was the, one of the best tag teams out there. I loved the bar. I just wasn't in love with Sheamus's mohawk. <laughs> I loved his. I liked his mohawk. I didn't like it when he put the white tips in the red yeah. mohawk. And it kind of looked like the end of a turkey. Um, but I, I love Seamus's look now. Like his look now is iconic. It's it's the Seamus we all know. But I love their entrance. I love the kilts. You know, mm-hmm. uh, they those two were great together. Why they split them up? It makes no sense. They had the best matches of the year with their best of seven or six or whatever they were. I think it was the best of seven that they did, and and they were just. The bar was great. The bar was legit bringing... They they brought legitimacy back to a tag team division. When You know, them finding the New Day and all that. Breaking them up, they haven't done anything with them. They have done nothing with them. They get Yeah, Sheamus and, Sh- and Shinsuke had a run with the titles, but... <sighs> yeah, Sheamus and Drew would be hilarious together. Mm-hmm. I would love to see them back together. And I mean, Drew made it sound like oh, Seamus, I can't because I'm concentrating on the title, but he has that now. So, like, there is time, you know, now. I feel like they're either setting Seamus and Drew up for a reunion or Seamus is going to turn on him and they're going to do Seamus versus Drew for the title, which I would love to see Seamus have another title run. Yeah, his last one one wasn't wasn't that good because it was just basically forlonging Roman getting it, Mm -hmm. you know, for, for an extended period of time. So... I could see a lot of stories coming out. And this is this is kind of like when Chief says, like, we should write these comic book movies. Like, we should write the Marvel and DC movies. Mm-hmm. This is why fans booking the territories, I feel the WWE should look to the fans sometimes and book the territory because the things we say build more stories. It leads to more stories that could come out for everybody instead of just what they do. And it's the same thing every week i mean Mm -hmm. look we had like three four we had a month of raw underground and now raw raw underground is gone you you know you you, there's no consistency if we can start if they can start getting consistency start using their matches to actually build more stories 
then then they're going to have the product that they need. And right now they're not. They're doing ones and dones or they're doing, you know, false finishes. They're doing they're overbooking matches. Um, which sometimes you can overbook and it's fine, but you gotta do it the right way. Mm-hmm. You know, and I and they need to do like what AEW does. You know, if you have a faction and their person's wrestling, have one of them on commentary. You know, Eddie Kingston on commentary when like this past week when the Blade uh, fought Pack, mm-hmm. it feels more like the faction means something. So if Bobby Lashley is going up against uh, him going up against Sami Zayn, have MVP on commentary. Yeah. They need to start taking these cues and realizing that's where people are loving it because it brings something fresh. It's not the same old stuff. Yeah, I, mean, I feel like they do that a little bit more on SmackDown. Like at least whenever Sasha and Bailey were doing, mm. when they were the tag champions, they were on commentary a lot. They've had, I don't even remember who all they've had on commentary, but I feel like they have people on commentary a lot more. But in, on Raw, yeah, it's very much like a, not as much. And then I feel like Retribution will be showing up. I hope, they haven't been on a pay-per-view yet, right? Like they they're on the shows, but they're not... Yeah, I haven't really. They haven't seen. been a pay per view yeah. player yet, so hopefully they. It, that I feel like is another thing that they really didn't do correctly. You know, they gave them like this anarchist start, and then they've just been burying. I mean, they've lost. I think every match that they've been in. So it's sort of like, what are you gonna do with these people? Like Dijakovic is such a a great athlete like why are you burying him behind a mask why are you burying why are you burying him and why are you burying Mia Yim Mm -hmm. Mia Yim could have come in be the HBIC and be a legit contender for the title I mean they could have even put her with Keith Lee just being like his manager or something in the beginning and it would have been great like the stuff that they did on NXT they could have you know, done uh, Mia Yim and Keith Lee versus Zelina Vega and either Andrade or Garza whenever they were still yeah. together. And, and that would have made sense. Why did you go from like a whole group, like a huge group, and it looked like um, there were quite a few people in the group. I think Chelsea Green was supposed to be mm-hmm. part of Retribution at one point. I think she actually said she wasn't going to do it. Like she was supposed to be a member of Retribution. She was like, no, I'm mm-hmm. not doing this. Kind of with Mercedes Martinez was like, no, uh, not doing this. And I, I really think, thought uh, in the beginning, instead of Mustafa Ali, that they were going to put The Miz as the leader because it just seemed like for a while when Retribution was attacking on SmackDown, Miz kind of showed up afterwards and he was always wearing like all black, kind of like they were. Yeah. Even in like some of the promos, like there was someone behind a mask and it looked like his eyes. But uh, I guess they scrapped that plan. I know real early on, Vanessa Bourne was supposed to be a member or she was one of the people that had run out because they saw her hair and they're like, oh, that's Vanessa mm-hmm. Bourne. And I know a lot of people were hoping it was CM Punk. A mm-hmm. lot of people were hoping CM Punk was going to be the the leader of Retribution, which I, I think over the last couple of years, there's been a little more warming up between the, com- between the company and Punk. Because uh, I've heard rumors that AJ Lee is going to be doing something with the company again. I've I've heard rumors about Punk coming back. I haven't heard anything about AJ. But then Punk will tweet things like with his election, his election tweet of him like imposing Biden's face, like the yeah. one where he's like blowing the kiss and it's like Trump. I'm like, I feel like that would have really angered because especially with Linda being part of his yeah. administration and everything. I'm like, hmm. But I'm fine. I would rather see Punk in AEW, I think. I think that'd be more his place. Go I to mean, WWE. He the, could be the, on commentary for all I care. The sad thing is, is it never lined up to where we could get Punk and Joe in WWE. Because some of the best indie matches were Punk versus Joe. The, the mm-hmm. Punk-Joe feud was amazing. There's a lot of now. There's a lot of people I would love to see back in WWE. They're all old timers, but I would love to see people like honestly. You know, you know who would have been a great person to lead Retribution? Joseph Raven. Parks. <laughs> Raven. That would be good too. Think about it. And now I, I don't think Raven would ever do it. And I know he's he's older now. He doesn't really look like Raven too. Well, he still kind of looks like Raven, but Raven, I think, with the chaos and the anarchy that Retribution was kind of first instilling, mm-hmm. that is Raven. That is so raven no pun intended (laughs) but um there's so many people i would love to see show up um that i think could really help these younger generation and kind of guide them kind of like the way AEW does 
Lance Archer only has to say a few words because mm-hmm. Jake the Snake does his talking for him. And when I you have like he's like starting Jake, to not get the push that he was originally getting, whether yeah. whether it just be because of COVID and you know they're not able to they have too many people and not enough stuff for them, yeah, or what it is. But but when you have someone like Jake who is a talker mm-hmm. and can talk people into a building and you put him with that younger guy who maybe is not as strong on the mic. And it's the same thing we said, like Bobby Lashley and those guys have an MVP who can talk on the mic. If you bring back some of these guys I and mean, with retribution, it's kind of like they're trying to do more Christian Bale, Batman. They're kind of growling and they're not, you know, and then Mustafa Ali, fantastic athlete, but he's never been a central focal guy that people could get behind. Truth be told, he's yeah. had his moments, but he's not like he, you know, he would get injured. He would be taken off TV. But if you had put someone like Raven with retribution or shoot, put Wade Barrett with, with retribution, you know, put somebody that could talk for these guys, you got money. Yeah, I was really hoping that instead of putting him with what ret- with retribution, that I really liked the stuff they were doing with Mustafa Ali and Ricochet and Cedric Alexander before he decided to join the Hurt Business and all these other people, like, I feel like with the Hurt Business and Retribution, like, Ricochet is the one that suffered the most, because, like, he was getting a push, and then it's sort of like everyone split, and he was the lone wolf, and now he's kind of back to doing whatever they feel like having him do. And I really wish that he would get more of a push for something, because he has a lot of talent, like... Yeah. He was one of those, you know, he was under a mask for a long time as Prince Puma. Yep. And now he's just. All I got to say is it looks like based off of videos I watched today from his official YouTube channel, carrying cross, his shoulder is healing perfectly fine. And soon we're going to get carrying cross and Scarlet back in NXT. And I want it. I was say, is Karrion Cross going to be the fifth member of the Team SmackDown? <laughs> I would absolutely love it if the lights went out and Scarlet came out on stage and just told everyone to fall and pray, and there's Karrion Cross. The thing is, though, is that they would mess that up. They so would mess it up. He would go to, like, the, the only music he would have would be fall and pray. It would just be fall and pray over and over and over again, you know. They, or they would go from fall and pray to just giving him MVP's music of I'm coming <laughs> Oh, that I know, right? It's like Jesus Christ. But uh, no, I think I think WWE needs what they really need to do. They need to if they're if N- NXT. Yes, it used to be the the training ground. It was it was their developmental territory. Now it is a legit third brand. Mm-hmm. If you have someone on NXT that is working, keep them there. Don't move them. Keep them there. I think Keith Lee could have done and perfect his entire career staying in NXT. You know, that is money. And those pay-per-views are better than anything the main roster people put on. Mm -hmm. War Games is going to be amazing. There's only three matches announced. War Games is going to be great. Is War Games just NXT or is it NXT versus like NXT UK? So right now, the War Games, there's three matches. First uh, is Leon Ruff versus Johnny Gargano versus Damian Priest. Is there a wheel involved? Huh? Oh, no, I don't think there's a wheel. Versus the wheel. Um, Undisputed Era versus the Kings of NXT, which is Pat McAfee. Oh, is that what they're calling themselves? Yeah, Pat McAfee, Pete Dunne, Danny Burch, and Orny Lorcan. I really didn't care about Pac Ma- Pat McAfee, and I'm really sad that they put Pete Dunne with him just because I really liked Pete Dunne yeah. prior. And I would almost rather see Pete Dunne have joined, like, Killian Dane and Drake Maverick. Team, and they're uh, fun little... Then you're going to have the women's match, which is Shotzi Blackheart, Ember Moon, Tony Storm, and a To Be Determined versus Candice LeRae, Indy Hartwell, Dakota Kai, and Raquel Gonzalez. I would love if to, to be determined was Tegan Knox, but I know she's still injured. And that poor girl, that's like 
the third or fourth time she's torn her ACL, and it's just mm-hmm. poor Tegan. I wonder if they'll put Zia Lee in that match, maybe, maybe. Since they were, like, I don't really understand what happened on, like, the next to last. I don't know if they did anything with her um, on I'm not going to spoil it for you because I know you're going to watch it. But I know the, the one prior, like, she was supposed to face – um Raquel Gonzalez and then she wasn't able to and so they sent out Boa and that was just like a weird like what's happening yeah. NXT right now has the best stuff on WWE in my personal opinion they have an actual authority figure on that show not just a WWE official Adam Pierce just mm-hmm. he's the fucking general manager just fucking say he's the general manager of that damn show mm-hmm. um you got William Regal mm-hmm. and Regal when you watch it, I love how he announces the match mm-hmm. uh, with the Undisputed Era and all that. Just wait till you watch it. It is it is Regal. Like you can see, this is like Regal is like I love it because I love William Regal. Always, so, but and I really uh, like, but I really like Barrett on commentary. Yeah, like, I like him Barrett, on commentary I, too. I forgot how much I loved him until he came back, and I was like, oh he's, yes. He's not. I still miss Nigel McGuinness. I will always love Nigel McGuinness yeah. and Mauro Ronaldo. Yeah. I think those two were the best. Yeah, I miss Mauro. I I like Beth Phoenix on commentary, but I feel like it's a little weird since she's not there in person. Sometimes that's a little like the dynamics a little weird because yeah. they're talking it, over each other. That and it's kind of like I hear her and it's like I it's I can't distinguish her from like when it was Renee Young or when Lita would yeah. do it. You know, that, that's my issue is she doesn't have the Beth Phoenix personality now if she was the glam if she was doing commentary as the glamazon and not just beth phoenix the, you know have that little bit of an edge that she had as the glamazon kind of like joe does you know he's still samoa joe he'll yeah. still say oh i could have beat the shit out of this guy if i was in the ring you know yeah if beth was more the glamazon there would be more to it but i love nigel mcginnis I, I'm, I, I'm glad he's still over there with nxt uk um which also amazing. Walter versus Ilya Dragunov was great. That was a match to be seen. Um, but right now, those are my picks for Survivor Series. I have no real high hopes, but hopefully they they yeah. they, they surprise me. It's not going to be one where I'm going to like rush home to watch it immediately, but I will watch it sometime next week. Mm. Is there a pay-per-view after that, or is this the last one for the year? So after that, of course, we do, we will have War Games, and then we will have, on December 20th, we will have TLC, Tables, Ladders, and Chairs. Why was I thinking they already did a TLC this year? Uh, they did Hell in a Cell. Maybe that's what I was thinking. Maybe they've just had so many like TLC type matches that it. I feel like they yeah. need to start making these things more special. Like the Hell in a Cell is only at Hell in a Cell. TLC matches are only at yeah, kind of like the like, Elimination Chamber is only at Elimination. Yeah, chamber. like I feel like they just they do these things so often that it's not really special anymore. Well, it's like the Money in the Bank used to only be at WrestleMania, and now it's got mm-hmm. its own pay per view. It's like I don't think it needed its own pay per view. WrestleMania was perfect for that. It it made it feel more special when it was at WrestleMania that Money in the Bank ladder match. Mm-hmm. Um, and don't throw Rey Mysterio off a building, and then all of a sudden he's magically fine the next day. Wasn't it that, Rey Mysterio? And was it Aleister Black also? There were two of them so. that got thrown off thrown off the it, it's the same as back in wcw where they the 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 giant fell off a building but then like five minutes later he was walking out to the ring like nothing had happened it, yeah. you know it, it's that kind of stuff there we go there's a, you know what there's the there's one of the fifth men uh, it's gonna be big show and big hogan show. and hogan That's what i i wish that they would do a money in the bank and the money in the bank person cashes in on like a tag title or the intercontinental title or something like that's what i was hoping they would do with otis was that heavy machinery would cash in on whoever the tag champions are at the time i really i wish they would have left the briefcase on otis just to see what he did with it because now it's kind of like you you pushed you built him up and then you just took everything away i would love it if the female mat the the women's match when they win the championship, that's something that the contract states, 
that they can that the, some, the way the contract's written, they find a loophole where it says they can cash in on any champion, mm-hmm. not women's champion, yeah, any champion, and then they cash it in on either the universal title or the WWE title. Because yeah. we've, it's been shown this year, whether she's controversial or not, they have shown that Tessa Blanchard winning the Impact Championship drew money. Mm-hmm. It, it drew money. It made people interested in Impact. If they would finally do that, and honestly, the ones I could see them doing that with would either be Asuka or Charlotte, giving them the, the big title, that would, that would make waves. I think Vince should come out of that comfort zone and make it happen. I was thinking just based on gimmick, they could do it with Bianca in a few years. They could, because she is the EST. She is of the EST. All of WWE. Of all of WWE. And you know what? I was not high on Bianca Belair when she first started. Yeah, I didn't um, really get it. I didn't get the hair, you know, her whipping people with the hair, and it's all the way down to, like, her ankles and the stuff like that. The fact that, like, that's not her real hair, and, like, day-to-day, she doesn't have that large ponytail, and I'm like, the stuff that she must go through before every match to get that, like, rebraided into her hair must be, like, very It's time-consuming. crazy, and make sure it doesn't fall out, you know? Mm-hmm. It's probably very oh. similar to, like, what Lance Archer goes through, because he, his hair is, like, mostly extensions also. Yeah. Well, I mean, most of them. I think the only one that doesn't have extensions is Ruby Rye. <laughs> now, yeah, like she cut her hair. I'm surprised. I'm like, WWE never lets you cut your hair. So either they wanted to do that or she's in trouble. Yeah. I Now, I liked Ruby with long hair. Her with short hair. It's. I mean, that is how it's, she looked on, on the indies. But I did like her with long hair. Yeah, me too. Um, You know, but like any of the blondes, it's all extensions. You know, Becky had extensions. Um, I, maybe the only other one is like Shayna Baszler that doesn't yeah, do extensions. Yeah, she doesn't have. You know, and Oscar. I don't think Oscar does either. No. I think like because I, I watch Kana Chan TV, and it's like I'm pretty sure Oscar doesn't. But if she does, it's probably just because she dyes it so much that it it breaks off. Yeah, but but and Bailey. Uh, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. I'm excited. Yeah. We'll see. But I think. Besides this pay-per-view, I'm most excited for the December 2nd Omega versus Moxley world title match for the AEW. I'm excited for that, especially I really, after this last week. Who, I really think that, up? yeah, I I almost am like, why did you add this in? Like, unless it was somehow Kenny or Kenny related, I just, I'm like, why are you starting a new, a new storyline well, when like this current Didn't you say it was Adam Page? Or somebody said it was Adam Page. Somebody was I like, didn't Adam see Page. that, so I don't know. Somebody was like, it's Adam Page. He's trying to help He's trying to help Kenny, you know, to, to do this. That could be. Um, I think Kenny is going to get the title in the here, though. I, I, th- I think, I Kenny's think he will. Get it. I, I think that this will be the, the good opportunity for it to change over. Like, I mean, as we had said a couple weeks ago, that Kenny would probably be the most likely one yeah. to beat Moxley. And, oh, and then and, Mox has that freaking amazing match with Eddie Kingston, and we were it was yeah, like, Shit. yeah. That was I mean that whole pay per view was amazing. It was so good. I I'm ex- I'm looking forward to it because they're doing it. It's like a special AEW called Winter is coming. Mm-hmm. Which um, I wonder if there's some sort of Game of Thrones. I think so. Um, you know, I think we're gonna see Cody, Darby Allen, and somebody against uh Hob against Team Taz. Um. So th- I think that feud's going to go on. I don't know if he's going to call in his brother or who's going to team up with the with Cody and Darby to go against Team Taz. Um, we're still seeing some dissension against the in- with the inner circle, mm-hmm. um, with with MJF. So there's there's so much going on. Oh, and then I guess Britt Baker is going to be feuding with Thunder Rosa now. Yeah, that's a thing. And then also, I really think that next week I would like I would on not that I would honestly not be upset if Anna Jay did beat Sheeta for the title. I wouldn't be upset about that either. Sheeta Sheeta's had a long a long run. She's credible, um, but it is time. Honestly, I would have loved to have Penelope Ford take it off of Sheeta at some point. Yeah. But I think but, Anna Jay, I think she's ready. And I also think yeah. that the Dark Order just needs to have a title holder at all times. And while John Silver does have the BTE title, yeah. he needs one that's on. They need they need a show and title. You, and I think it'd be great if it was Anna Jay. You know, all the male members of the Dark Order can't get the job done, but Anna Jay can. That leads, you know, some credence. And I will just say, thank God the bunny is back. Because, oh my God, 
Allie, you are so amazing. Mm-hmm. That's all I got to say. Now, if Rosemary can leave TNA and go AEW so we can get the bunny and the, the demon and the bunny together again, that would be, I would, I, that would be my, my end all be all. I've been hearing a lot of reports ever since um, the Rascals, and, but whenever they had announced that they were leaving this last Tuesday now, that I've been hearing things like Taya Valkyrie's um, contract is up soon and that she isn't going to be renewing. I don't know if there's any truth to any of this, but I'm like, hmm, they could put her in WWE. They could put her and Maurice back and they could be with Miz and Morrison, have the wives with the with the men yeah but it just seems like impact they just gained a bunch of people but it sounds like they might be losing all i mean they lost rvd they lost kylie ray for other circumstances they lost now the since they lost rvd did they lose katie forbes too i believe so yes are they together real life yes oh somehow i re- some i don't know what it was somehow i remember when she first came to the the, the tna impact she wasn't as like like thick yeah as she ended up being that and the braided hair just I, somehow that made her. I didn't like her, that look on her. I'm a, I'm such a bitch with the fashionista stuff. I swear to God. I always wondered with her, and I'm not saying this because I think she's gotten work done, but usually with like thicker women, I feel like their abs aren't as prominent as hers. So I'm just like, are her abs real or like what what's happening there? Because I'm just not used to like seeing that yeah i don't i don't know i don't know i mean it looked like she got you know like her lips and things like that definitely looked like she had some work done um but with impact you know you they, i don't think they know what to do with jordan grace now that she's not the champion they're throwing her in tag teams i really wanted them grace. to put the x division title on her i really thought that, that was going to be awesome and then it was like this whole fluke it's kind of this thing where when she first started, it was Jordan Grace. It was, you know, she was this powerhouse. She was new on the scene. Now it's almost like you're getting like a mixture of like glamour model Jordan Grace mixed with the power because she didn't used to wear like the makeup, like all the li- mm-hmm. lipstick and stuff when she was wrestling. Now she's doing that. She's being, a, you know, and I, and I follow her on social media. So, yeah. And I know she does a lot of like modeling and yeah. things like that. Um, but what I always liked about Jordan Grace, especially when she made appearances in AEW, because she was in like the buy-ins a few times on AEW, was it was about her being this powerhouse. She was just a huge, she was just a, no, I'm not saying huge, like huge. I'm saying huge isn't her, she's bigger than some of the other girls as far as that yeah. Her musculature. Yeah, her she's stature. very muscular. Very muscular. So, uh, but now it's like they don't know what to do with her. It seems mm-hmm. like the tag team tournament, it's, 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 it's all revolving around Tennille Dashwood. Well, she's already been eliminated. <laughs> True. Um, personally, Unless she I, becomes Jordan Grace's partner for a second chance. Right. Personally, I think it's going to go to Valkyrie and Rosemary. I think they're going to take it all. It's going to come down to Rosemary and Val- uh, Valkyrie against Havoc and Nevaeh. Yeah. They're the only two teams that, are, that I feel are legit in this whole well, thing. Or Tasha Steeles and Kira, Kira Hogan. True. They're the other ones. So it's going to come down to one of those three. Um, just for money purposes, I'm thinking it's going to go Valkyrie and Rosemary. Um, also to lead into maybe we figure out who shot Johnny Bravo and maybe it was Valkyrie. Mm-hmm. Maybe Taya, maybe Taya and Valkyrie will win the titles, and then someone will shoot one of them. Yeah, you know, like because I said, Rosemary is one of my all-time favorites. I've loved her since Decay when she first showed up in Decay, mm-hmm. wearing a As- Asuna Sword Art Online inspired outfit. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish she was a little more still Decay. I know you have to evolve the character, um, but I like her. I liked her so much more when she was kind of like Decay and not you know uh but be that what it is i think her and Allie do the best stuff together and i would just love to see her back with Allie and doing the the bunny and the demon and yeah i i will say that the one benefit that i saw of Allie being with qt marshall instead of with the butcher and the blade is that she did do more in ring work yeah and i still feel like they should explain they should have you know they had the closure between qt and Allie, but they i feel like they need to have it between Allie and brandy like they're pushing yeah. Brandy with Jade right now, but I feel like Allie and Brandy need something, whether it be a match or just some sort of closure. Well, I mean, now you got, I guess, apparently Brandy, because they did this whole thing where like 
that woman got in the ring and it was like Shaq. She's talking about Shaq. And yeah, then, so I don't know what they're going to do. Like if, if there's going to be like a Shaq and Cody at some point or well, what's all, happening with that. I don't know because for years there were, we were supposed to get Shaq and Big Show. I heard that. I saw a report that that never happened because Shaq would never get into shape for yeah. it. But I'm like, I mean, how, what kind and, of and shape it, does he need to be in? Like, it was kind of, I mean, I understand that was a work you know mm-hmm. work but there were times during that whole thing that you felt uncomfortable like it was a shoot like there's just yeah. some woman got in the ring and started talking down cody and then brandy comes out and brandy went full ratchet i mean i mean brandy's i loved brandy's promo on that i loved her response i was waiting the whole time i'm like brandy has to come out for this like it it doesn't make any sense if she doesn't yeah so i really liked that she came out and that sort of set up her versus jade but i'm like wait but Cody and Shaq like is this gonna be like a Jericho Mike Tyson thing where like they kind of do it and then it just never gets talked about again yeah which I get that that happened because then Mike signed a fight deal so he wasn't allowed to like do it but yeah and it's like Jade Cargill it's like I'm looking I have to look her up um you know she's uh she trained with Heath Slater Mm mm-hmm I listened, she was on the AEW Restricted podcast this week, so I listened to that Yeah, so she's, like, brand new on the the scene. Yeah. You know, she's 28 years old, but she's brand new on the wrestling scene. Um, You know, I'm looking at the AEW roster right now. I did like seeing Leva Bates in action again uh, Mm -hmm. this week. Um, You know, now that, uh, you know, she's the only librarian left in AEW. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I look at the roster and it's like, uh, I think Riho's in Japan. Like that's why she hasn't been around is that she's yeah because of the, you know, cause she's also wrestles in another company over in Japan. So yeah. Uh, world wonder ring stardom. Yeah. So she's over there most of the time because I think right now they still have travel restrictions between yeah. the two countries. Um, but like you look at it, like Brandy Rhodes has a backstage role, Leva Bates has a bra- backstage role, um, Rebel has a backstage role, Awesome Kong has a backstage role in in the company. Aubrey Edwards has a backstage. I feel like everyone has a backstage yeah. role. Everybody has a backstage role. But you look at the 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 women's roster, you know, Anna J, Ali, Big Swole, Britt Baker, Diamante, Emmy Sakura, Hikaru Shida, Eva Lee, Jade Cargill. Uh, Chris Statlander, who's out with an ACL injury. Mm-hmm. Leva Bates, Mel, Nyla Rose, Penelope Ford, Red Velvet, Riho, Serena Deeb, Shauna, Tay Conti, and Yuka Sakazaki. Is Mel out with an injury or anything? It or doesn't what's... say it on here, no. It says she, it, no. Um, so it's kind of like, what are you going to do? Like, the male roster's huge. Mm-hmm. Their male roster is so freaking huge. It's huge, huge, and then they keep bringing in indie people to work with the superstars, which I like because I like seeing these people that I love from the indies be on on the show. Like, I think the match that the Bucks had on Wednesday with Top Flight was really good. Yeah, like, I would love, like, I know he's not, I don't think he's signed to AEW, uh, at least not on this list, but I would love to see him do more with Brian Pillman Jr., Mm-hmm. I love Brian Pillman Jr. I think he's got the look. Um, they just need to do something. They just need. They would need to do something with him. But it's. I. I, I need to get more from their women's division. Yeah, for sure. So that's that's my two cents. I need them to do more with the women's division. And I also need the commentary team to take the women's division and the women fans a little more seriously. Cause JR yeah. with his bake sale comment on the Wednesday just didn't, didn't go over well with me or a lot of people yeah. that I saw online. No, I understand Come on, that. JR. Like I get it. Like as somebody that like, I'm a woman and I'm a baker, like I'm not, a, I'm, I'm offended, but like, I mean, it's it's just not okay. It's almost like J- Jerry Lawler with his like ramen noodle and Kool Aid comment that he's made with various superstars, which I think is one of the reasons why he's not on commentary anymore. Yeah. 
but yes, Survivor Series, not looking forward to it as much, but the stuff that's coming up with AEW and hopefully the stuff is coming up with Impact. I'm looking forward to seeing how Impact keeps me interested now that Kylie Ray is gone, the Rascals are gone. I'm guessing the North is going to be doing a little bit less because I really think that Ethan Page is wonderful on the mic and he is a very entertaining part of that show for me. So I need them to keep him around. Right. But yes, that concludes our Survivor Series recap. I'm sure you will be back doing another pay-per-view sooner than later. Where can people find you in the day-to-day world? Uh, day-to-day world, you can find me on Twitter, Nerd Rage Renegades, N-R-D-R-G Renegades. Um, that is where uh, you can mostly get me. If I'm streaming, that is on Twitch, Nerd underscore Rage underscore Renegades. Uh, so those are the two places you can find me most often is Twitch and, uh, discord or not discord, Twitter. And where can people listen to the nerd rage renegades podcast? You can listen to that right currently on podbean.com. Uh, we just put up a new episode. So, uh, over 200 episodes are up there and that is where we are right now. Uh, I am, since we've come back, I got to check and see how everything is going. Like if we're still on Stitcher and things like that, I'm not sure, but I will start be uh, getting this on those other brands as well. All right. And then you can find me on Twitter at rainbow underscore Sarah and on YouTube at rainbow red Panda. And that's all I have for this episode. So I will see you guys next week. Bye everybody. See you later. (laughs) 